Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to AI on Crypto. And today I've got a really exciting video for you guys. Very fun one for me to make. I'm going to share with you my million dollar Miranda strategy. That's right. I plan to become a millionaire by playing games like Mirandas from Gala Games in the future. These games are coming to the blockchain and with NFT technology, they are bringing about what's called play to earn economies. These are real world economies built around these gaming ecosystems that act like parallel societies to our own here in the real world. And they are going to comprise what we will refer to in the future as the metaverse. And for certain players, there is absolute fortunes to be made in these gaming ecosystems like Mirandas because they are 100% player owned. So today on this video, I'm going to go over with you guys a summary of what Mirandas is exactly and what is my personal strategy to become a man of commerce, a businessman in Mirandas, perhaps leading to a million dollar lifestyle. So get ready, guys. We're going to get into Mirandas and my Miranda strategy right here on this video. This is AI on Crypto. On this channel, we cover cryptocurrency prices and trends, altcoin gems, and all the things on the blockchain that fill our bags to the max. And we stay far away from Rec City. We cover NFTs, play to earn blockchain gaming, decentralized finance, and more. So if you're looking for that kind of cryptocurrency content to keep you on the top of your crypto game, please subscribe and tap that bell so you don't miss any future video. And on a, a video like this, guys, I really have to emphasize that this is not financial advice. I'm definitely serious about having a million dollar Miranda strategy. But that being said, cryptocurrency and play to earn gaming is incredibly risky. And I am not a professional financial advisor. Please consult a professional before making any personal financial decisions. This video is for entertainment and information purposes only. All right, guys. So now we're going to get to the meat and potatoes of this video. We're going to start out by just kind of summarizing what is Mirandas. For those of you that are new to the channel, perhaps new to blockchain gaming, Mirandas is an epic MMORPG medieval themed game by Gala Games. Gala Games is a gaming blockchain company that is trying to be like the steam of blockchain. They are a gaming studio. Mirandas is a game that they are really producing in-house themselves, but they other but they also publish other games by other developers, lending their expertise and blockchain knowledge to create a Steam-like ecosystem with many mini games on the docket. They, with games like Townstar and Spider Tank, they've already got live games to play on the blockchain, and they've got epic titles like Mirandas. Echoes of Empire, and, and even The Walking Dead in the pipeline. So Mirandas is a mysterious new continent where adventure awaits the brave few willing to journey to its shores. If you go to Mirandas.game, you can see the unbelievable artwork that is going to make up this incredible world of Mirandas. Mirandas is a fantasy world powered by blockchain technology, allowing players to truly create their own content. Mirandas is a game unlike any other. An epic fantasy RPG set in a massive world ruled by five player monarchs. That's right, there's going to be five kingdoms in the world of Mirandas, and each of these kingdoms are in the form of citadels and were for sale. I think all but one has been bought at this point for, by the way, millions of dollars. So guys, in Mirandas, players have absolute freedom of choice. There are no maps, no quest givers, Players can set out into the wilderness alone to try their fortunes against the monsters of the deep woods and dungeons, join with one of the monarchs to serve as a knight in their court, or set up shop in one of the five great citadels of the realm. Players take on the role of avatars in the world, and if desired, can purchase an exemplar avatar with powers and abilities beyond those of others in Mirandas. Player ownership of in-game assets is a central mechanic with players being able to hold land deeds, which allow them to claim parts of the wilderness and set up holdfasts ranging from small farms to massive cities. The risk of exploring Mirandas are great, but so are the rewards. For Mirandas is rich in the arcane substance Materium, 
a concentrated magic that allows players to channel its power to cast spells, craft the impossible, and even raise a slain hero from the dead. In Mirandus, you decide who you will be and choose your own quest in the epic fight against evil. So Materium is going to be a big part of the play to earn aspect of this game. It is going to be the substance out there with great value for eager adventurers to go out there and harvest. So let's just take a look at this here. Revealed to one of the great kings by a mysterious visitor, Materium has caused exemplars, the greatest heroes of the land, and others to travel to Mirandus' shores in search of this miraculous substance. Players are staking their claim and purchasing deeds to towns, cities, and citadels. Each one is seeking to secure a foothold on Mirandus, where Materium, the very power of magic, abounds. The call to adventure is now. Will you be amongst the few in exploring this new continent and uncovering its wonders? Well, I can assure you guys, I'm going to. So when it comes to these exemplars, guys, exemplars are elite avatars with special abilities which will allow them to perform certain actions much better than others. You see, I believe when Mirandus gets launched in its ultimate form, when it truly releases, there are going to be free-to-play avatars. These are going to be human avatars that any player can get for free and begin playing the game. The Exemplar is a high-end avatar in an NFT form that can be an elf, halfling, an orc, a dwarf, or a human. And each of these Exemplars have their own special ability that might give you an advantage, especially if you're going to be somebody like me looking to specialize in certain areas of the game in order to best maximize not only my fun, but also my profits. So one very important aspect of the game of Mirandus for it to be a truly player-owned economy is this concept of player-owned deeds. Player ownership of in-game assets is a central mechanic in Mirandus. Players can hold land deeds that allow them to claim parts of the wilderness, setting up holdfasts ranging from small farms to massive cities. There will only ever be 1,625 deeds in Mirandus. Players can place their deeds anywhere there is open space. So guys, Gala Games definitely wants Mirandus to be a gaming metaverse where there are literally millions of daily users. So if you have a gaming ecosystem of millions, perhaps tens of millions one day, the number 1,625 is minuscule, so there's not going to be a lot of people in the world that have land deeds in Mirandus. Because of that, they are highly valuable, which is why many have sold for six figures or more already, even a few selling for seven figures. Each deed comes with a basic layout that includes walls that will repel monsters, a home for the deed owner, and plots where other players in the game can place buildings. And as you can see, 99% of all land deeds have already been sold. The next aspect is buildings. So buildings are also player owned and these things are like the businesses in Miranda. So check this out. Own your own property. Players can place buildings on another player's land. Players must own a building that corresponds to the size of the plot and can build it freely there once they've paid their lease to the owners who set the terms. So these are like your forges, your armor shops, your weapon shops, your potion shops. All right, guys. And as a business owner, you're going to have to manage supply chains. So if you were to buy a forge, you're going to have to have either yourself or some people going out there into the game, gathering things like materium so you can enchant your items or just raw resources like ore or steel or whatever you need in order to make and craft weapons in the game to sell to the adventurers. Okay guys, so that is Mirandus in a nutshell. Now it's time to give you guys my million dollar Mirandus strategy. Now anybody can play Mirandus once it goes live. It is going to be a free to play game. And there's going to be plenty of opportunities for eager adventurers to earn themselves some Materium, ultimately maybe some Gala Coin or some Ethereum, through their efforts playing the game. This might be in the form of working for a business owner, 
going out and harvesting wheat for an inn, something like that. There are going to be in-game tasks, going out to a mine and mining ore, bringing it back to shop owners. Plenty of ways for the free-to-play players to add value to the economy and also earn value for themselves. But if you want to be a Mirandus millionaire, you're not going to be able to do it with only a free-to-play avatar. Just like in the real world, the similar economic concepts apply, especially the cardinal eco economic rule of you have to spend a buck to make a buck. That's right. In order to be a true man of commerce, a person going after millions in Mirandus, you are going to have to be engaged in the game. You are going to have to be an avid participant. You are going to have to be adding value. And you are going to have to own a considerable amount of value generating assets if you hope to be a Mirandus millionaire. So now I'm going to show you guys my inventory. And in my inventory, you can actually see my Miranda strategy. So first of all, let's start with my businesses. I have a weapon shop. I have a camp. I have a forge. And I have an armor shop. Okay, I also have a tent. This tent is going to be a way to get quick rest when I'm out in adventure. So I don't have to come back into town to pay for an inn or to sleep in my dock or something like that. All right, guys. The camp is also something where I will be able to charge other players money to set up their tents in order to get the rest they need out on adventures. But by owning a camp, I can take a party of adventurers out into the wild and then find a place to set up a camp so that we can all eat, make some food and get rest. All right, guys. But where the real income is going to come is with my weapon shop, forge and armor shop. Okay, guys, I believe, and nobody knows exactly how these are going to work just yet, but I believe I'm going to be able to make both weapons and armor in my forge and then sell them in my weapon shop and armor shop. So I'm creating a supply chain where I make armor and weapons in my forge and then sell them in my armor and weapon shop businesses. Of course, I don't know exactly how these things are going to work, but that's how my strategy is aligning in my head. And to assist me with that strategy, I have two exemplars that are buffed towards blacksmithing. So I have the dwarf, dwarf exemplar of the Iron Shaper. These are artisan blacksmiths who raise their young in the way of the hammer. A celebration is held on the child's first anvil strike, and this will reduce energy costs when blacksmithing. So by having an exemplar with reduced energy from blacksmithing means I'm going to be able to pump out more um, items than somebody without the Iron Shaper exemplar. I've also got a Strong Hands exemplar, which is basically the same thing, only in human form. So this is also somebody who is going to be really good in my forge, weapon shop, and armor shop. Okay, guys, and to get me and to help to get myself the materials I need for these things, I have a Deep Mountain Clan Dwarf Exemplar. This is an exemplar that can see vividly in pitch black environments. So I can go deep into a mine, down a cave, into a mountain, and with this Dwarf Exemplar, I can see crystal clear any valuable resources or, or materium that might be laying around. I also have this dwarf exemplar right here, the conveyor, which can lift incredibly heavy items and move it out of the way, which could obviously come in handy when you're mining, right? <clears throat> and the Gala Games team has talked about being able to rent out items in Townstar. I fully expect items to be rentable in the game of Mirandus. So if I can find a team of willing players, I can lend them the use of my exemplars so that we can go out on expeditions together to get those resources that I'm going to need in my businesses. Or I might just have them do it while I man my shops, right? And by doing that, I'm going to be a leader in the game and I'm going to be able to manage my supply chain and provide great items to the world of Mirandus. And I believe that by doing this, I'm going to make a lot of money. You can also see here, guys, that I do have a Mirandus box 
So what these Mirandus boxes are going to do is once they reveal, they are going to work with exemplars to enhance the ability of that exemplar. So obviously I'm really hoping for a dwarf, but if it's not a dwarf, I'm hoping for it to be a seafarer because that's the other component of my Mirandus million dollar strategy is my dock and my boat. I would say that the dock is definitely my most expensive Mirandus NFT, followed closely by the Crier, which is a fantastic ship in the world of Mirandus. As we discussed in the Mirandus summary, the substance materium is going to be the magical substance of Mirandus that allows business owners like me, armor shops, weapon shops, to infuse their items with enchanted abilities. This goes double for potions, for food. You're gonna be able to do a number of things with Materium in order to make items you sell at stores more expensive, right? So as a weapon shop owner, as an armor shop owner, as a forge owner, I'm going to benefit greatly by having Materium on hand. Now, one of the best ways of earning Materium is to get on a ship, go out and find an island, get loads of materium and bring it back to port, right? So that is why I have my ship. And I also have my dock, if you look at this right here, a modest dock is small but serviceable. A few small ships can dock here, but larger vessels will need to find a quay, pier, or wharf. So basically I am gonna be limited to allowing criers and picards are gonna be the only boats that are I'm gonna be able to allow to dock in my dock. But basically, that's gonna be a passive income generator. So with my dock, I'm gonna be able to charge dock space to other boat owners, but I'm also gonna be able to dock my boat there free of charge, increasing its profitability. I'm sure you can see where my strategy is. I've got a forge, weapon shop, and armor shop, and I've got exemplars to go out and get the materials I need as well as a boat and a dock to actually go out there and find materium to make the items I sell all the more valuable. And guys, to help me navigate the seas, I do have a seafarer exemplar. This is a exemplar. The lore behind this is they are born on Nar in the violent seas of the north. They excel at navigation and finding things lost at sea they have a bonus to sailing so i am setting myself up to have a string of businesses as well as the supply chain to keep those businesses full of all the inventory they need to keep selling valuable items to the world of mirandas and as i visualize myself in this game i really see that dock and the boat being a real primary apparatus of my mirandas lifestyle so I want to end this video by taking you to this Medium article, which talks about sailing the sea in Mirandus, okay? So what do we really know about the sea? 71% of the Earth that we know is water. There are approximately 321 million cubic miles of space in the oceans of our planet. Beneath the surface is an alien world of which we know very little. James Cameron may have explored 35,000 feet into Challenger's Deep of the Mariana Trench all by himself. But can you imagine what it was like in the old days before radar and computer navigation? The most daring adventurers of the past must have been those who set sail into the great unknown, the endless seas, knowing not what adventure and toil awaited them. You're an explorer of the sea, a seafarer. You are envied by those who are tied to their landlocked responsibilities, and you are marveled at by the most civilized people of the towns and cities. They do not understand your life, they do not feel the unbridled joy as you do when you are gently rocked by the waves. They do not know the exhilarating rush of adrenaline that accompanies a squaw as it threatens to consume your crew and swallow your ship into hungry chaos. So guys, there's only going to be a handful of boats in Mirandus. So it is true that if we create a gaming metaverse of millions or tens of millions of players, there's literally only going to be about a thousand boat owners, guys. That is not a lot. So I feel incredibly honored and fortunate to have a boat and a dock so early in this gaming ecosystem's development. Seafaring in Mirandus. Mirandus will take a bold step into the mysterious seas that few games have attempted to take before. 
The creators of this fantasy world recognize that there is a world on the waves and an even greater one beneath them. For some, the seas of Mirandus will be a merciless enemy, a deadly wasteland from whence there is no return. For those with their sea legs, the waters may bring untold opportunities, adventure, and treasures. The greatest of those who ride the waves and adventure beyond the horizon are the human seafarers. And as I showed you guys, we've got a seafarer exemplar. In addition to the Great Blue Yonder, Mirandus will contain local bodies of water such as lakes, rivers, and ponds. Many of these local bodies will have their own secrets, and seafarers will be adept at navigating them all. There will be intricate and treacherous coastlines to explore, and the seafarers will be able to explore them with the greatest of ease. Seafarers receive a bonus to maneuvering in small watercraft as well as large ships. The world of Mirandus is essentially one huge island. Like any continent of the world, seafarers are driven to explore outward on the water with no boundaries. If a seafarer knows the way to an unexplored island far from home, they can sail there with little to no danger on their voyage. Seafarers can sail farther and faster than the average player. In fact, if a non-seafaring adventurer of Mirandus has coordinates to a great treasure trove miles from the shore, they would be wise to connect with a seafarer to deliver them safely, for a price. So guys, right there, that's a, that's a key uh, tip from Gala Games to you. If you can't afford a dock, if you can't afford a boat, you can at least get yourself a human exemplar seafarer, and then you will be commissioned to be the captain of voyages by boat owners that don't want to do the sailing themselves. So if you can't afford a boat, guys, the next best thing is to get a seafarer. Just like in real life, there will be places outside the coast that cannot be visited by a mere canoe. Allowing avatars to simply canoe paddle to a distant deserted isle is a rather lame attempt at authenticity and a jarringly poor player experience. Mirandus will have true authenticity in its seafaring. Seafarers are at home on a toss ship and they find their way by the stars. They are able to row more efficiently, spending less energy than others. They can travel faster and more safely. They can avoid random encounters and they can seek out hidden wonders using tips and maps. The Seafarer's Boat The boat of a seafarer is their closest companion, their protector, and their home. Ships can hold great amounts of treasure and supplies. So in Mirandus, a seafarer's ship is the most secure place to stow their goods. Boats, which can be upgraded, enhanced, and built upon, are vessels into the least known areas of Mirandus for those who dare explore them. A seafarer's boat is the most important thing in their life. While they may not tie themselves down to towns, jobs, or mates, every seafarer has a sturdy rope lashed from boat to heart. With a good boat underfoot, a Miranda Seafarer is never far from adventure and fortune. All right, guys. So that does it for my Miranda strategy as well as my Miranda summary. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some value. If you're new to this play to earn gaming movement, Miranda is definitely what I consider to be one of the top blue chip games in the space. And Gala Games is absolutely my favorite blockchain company in all of crypto. And they have been for about a year now. As you can see, guys, I'm setting myself up to be a true businessman in Mirandus. So if you play the game, look for my stores, come buy some weapons from me, come buy some armor from me, come talk to me. And hey, you can hop on my boat and we can go set sail on the seas and find that precious materium. And there will be plenty for all to go around and we are going to prosper but do so while having fun guys once this game kicks off i fully intend to be this to be like a job because it's not passive maybe the dock will be passive income but the actual businesses the boat it's going to require my management therefore i truly see mirandas as a place that i'm going to spend my professional hours in the near future Along with Mirandus, I have a couple of other games in mind that I'm going to continue to play to be part of my overall play-to-earn gaming strategy to be a man of commerce in this new and emerging world. All right, guys, so if you haven't done it already, subscribe, tap that bell, and as always, we'll catch you on the next one.